Hi everyone, and welcome to Unit 10. In this unit, we're going to be talking about exponential and radical functions. So we're moving on from quadratic, and we're looking at a different type of function. But to start us off, we're going to have to start looking at geometric sequences, and that's going to be the focus for today's lesson. Let's set out some objectives for this lesson. By the end, we will be able to recognize geometric sequences and find the nth term of a geometric sequence. Or in other words, find any term you want out of a geometric sequence. So to start, let's, let's review some definitions. A sequence is just a list of numbers or terms. A list of numbers or terms. And a geometric sequence is a sequence whose consecutive terms, so terms in a row, whose consecutive terms have a common ratio common ratio. So let's just take a look at this sequence down here. We have 1, 5, 25, 1, 25. And ideally this keeps going. So between 1 and 5, we can see that 1 times 5 gives us 5. Well, let's look at 5 and 25. 5 times 5 gives us 25. That's another times 5. And 25 times 5 gives us 125. So we can see here that the common ratio of this little sequence is 5. That's the ratio between our terms that come one after another. Have you ever played the game 2048? If you have, I bet you haven't realized that what you're actually playing is a series of geometric sequences. Every time you get two of the same number, it multiplies by 2. So we match 2 and 2, and we get 4 and 4 and 4, and we get 8, and 8 and 8, and we get 16. This is a geometric sequence with a common ratio of 2. Pretty cool, huh? Here's our first task. We want to find the next few terms in a sequence. How are we going to do this? Well, there are two steps we need to follow. The first step is to divide each term, so this is divide each term by the term before it to determine our common ratio. And we're gonna call this common ratio r. Our second step is to multiply each term by r to get the next term. So we'll multiply each term by our common ratio to find the term that comes after it. So let's do an example. Here we have one, three, nine, 27, and then three blanks. So we wanna find the next three terms. Well, let's follow step number one. We're gonna divide each term by the one that comes before it. So, we have three little carrots here. Let's start at the beginning. Three divided by the one before, before it, so three divided by one, well that equals three. Nine divided by three equals three. And 27 divided by nine equals three. It's always good to check each term to make sure that your common ratio stays the same if you find that your common ratio is not the same, your sequence is not geometric. All right, so we found r. Our r is 3. So what we're going to do is follow step 2. Multiply each term by the r that we found to get the next term. So 27 times 3 is going to give us 81. And 81 times 3 is going to give us 243. And 243 times 3 is going to give us 729. So those are the next three terms in our sequence. Here we have example number 2. So example number 2 shows us that geometric sequences don't always have to move upwards. They can move downwards as well. So here we have negative 16, 4, negative 1, 1 fourth, and then 3 blanks. Also here, we have some negatives mixed in with positives. So let's figure out what our common ratio is. We're going to have to follow step one. Divide each term by the one before it. So we'll make our little carrots here. 4 divided by negative 16. That's going to give us negative 1 fourth. How about negative 1 divided by 4? That's going to also give us negative 1 fourth. And 1 fourth divided by negative 1. This is also going to give us negative one-fourth. So our common ratio here is negative one-fourth. 
Now we can use this by multiplying each term by r, which is our second step. So 1 fourth times negative 1 fourth is going to give us negative 1 sixteenth. So this is 1 fourth times negative 1 fourth. And negative 1 sixteenth times negative 1 fourth is going to give us positive 1 64th. And 1 64th times negative 1 fourth is going to give us negative 1 256th. And those are our next three terms. All right, here's our task for objective number two. We want to find the nth term in a sequence. What do I mean by nth? Nth means any term you want. That could be the 10th term, the 15th term, the 200th term, and can be any number you want. And how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to do this by using a formula. And I'm not going to tell you the formula right away. We're going to derive it first. So let's take a look at this example sequence right here. We have 3, 6, 12, 24, and so on. Let's figure out what our common ratio is here. Well, 6 divided by 3 is 2, 12 divided by 6 is 2, and 24 divided by 12 is 2. So r equals 2. All right, now let's take a look at this table. We have some words, and we have the words expressed in numbers, and we have these expressed in algebra. So our words are representing our terms. We have our first, second, third, fourth term, and whatever our nth term may be. Our second column has numbers. So our first term is 3 from here. Our second term is 3 times our common ratio once. So 3 times 2 to the first, which gives us 6. Our third term is our first term multiplied by our common ratio twice. So that's 2 squared. So 3 times 2 squared gives us that third term. Our fourth term is 3 times 2 three times. So that's 2 cubed. And 3 times 2 cubed gives us 24. Do you notice a pattern with these numbers? with these exponents up here, that one is the second term minus one, two minus one. Two is three minus one. Three is four minus one. So you can guess that the nth term would have our first term, three, times our common ratio to the n minus one exponent. And that will give us our nth term or as we like to call it, a sub n, where sub means that the n is below and in tiny print next to the a. So that's our nth term. And now let's look at it in algebra. It's pretty much the same, maybe a little cleaner. So a1, a sub 1, represents our first term. That's how we describe it in algebra. Our second term, we're going to say, is a sub 1, times our ratio once, just like we did here, and so on. I have my ratio twice times my first term and my ratio three times times my first term. So when we get down to the nth term, we have our first term times r to the n minus one. So whatever term you want to find, your exponent is going to be the number before that. So the formula we're going to use is just this. a sub n, so whatever nth term you want to find, equals a sub 1, the first term, times your common ratio to the n minus 1 power. We'll do some examples with these, just so we can get the hang of it. OK, so to reiterate, our formula that we're going to use is a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. And I put this in words here to make it a little easier. So the nth term equals the first term times our common ratio to the n minus 1 power. All right, so let's do an example. What's the tenth term in the sequence negative 64, 32, negative 16, 8, and so on? So we want to find the tenth term down the line. Yeah, we could probably figure it out just by multiplying by our common ratio, but that would take a long time. And what if we were looking for the 200th term and not the 10th term? We want a quick and easy way to do that. 
So let's identify a few things first. We're going to need our first term, our common ratio, and whatever n is, the term that we're looking for. So our first term here is negative 64. That's a sub 1. R, we're going to have to do a little work for. We have to figure out what our common ratio is. So let's follow those steps that we learned before. Our first step was to divide each term by the term before it to determine what r is. So 32 divided by negative 64, 32 divided by negative 64, I know that's kind of small, is going to be negative 1 half. Negative 16 divided by 32, also negative 1 half. 8 divided by negative 16, negative 1 half. So r is negative 1 half. n is the number of the term that we're looking for. So we're looking for the tenth term. n for us is going to be 10. Now we have everything we need and we can plug it into our formula. So our nth term, which we don't know yet, is going to be equal to the first term, negative 64, times our common ratio, negative 1 half, to the n minus 1 power. That's the 10 minus 1 power. So now, if you plug this into your calculator, you're going to find that our tenth term is 0 0.125. In other words, 1 eighth. That's a lot easier than figuring out 10 terms down the line. Do you agree? All right, I'm going to let you try those problems at the bottom of your guided notes. Thanks for watching.